Okay, welcome to another Simple Engineering Snippet. In this instructional video, we will be working with flow, laminar fully developed flow between flat plates, and our goal will be uh, to find the uh, temperature distribution. Hope you find it useful. Okay, so we're going to be working with the uh, X component of the uh, momentum equation. And to keep things simple, I've just uh, expressed it here uh, in two-dimensional form, X and Y. And I've worked a similar problem in the past to uh, solve for the velocity distribution, so I'm going to go through this rather quickly. First thing to note is uh, where we've defined our axis. Y is equal to zero is at the uh, bottom plate. And let's go through and uh, simplify this equation. Well, it's fully developed flow, so uh, nothing has changed in the X direction. We only have flow in the X direction, so the Y component of velocity is equal to zero. And there is no gravity in the X direction. And again, things are not changing in the X direction. The flow is uh, fully developed. And that leaves us with this equation where we have the dynamic viscosity times the second derivative of the exponent velocity with respect to Y uh, t is equal to the pressure gradient. So I can integrate that twice. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we see two uh, constants of integration. And now let's list our boundary conditions. And those that boundary condition that the uh, velocity is equal to zero at the upper surface at Y is equal to H and the lower surface at y is equal to zero. And I can uh, go ahead and solve for, to achieve an equation uh, for the exponent of velocity as a function of y. All right, well, we're gonna be uh, taking advantage of symmetry and we expect symmetry along the center line at h is equal to two. And that's where the maximum velocity is going to occur. So I can go ahead and cast this equation in terms of this uh, maximum velocity, just sort of uh, as a simple way to, uh, to keep uh, progressing forward. Okay, so I've drawn in the uh, velocity distribution. It's a, a parabolic shape as we expected. And now let's uh, start on the uh, temperature distribution. We're gonna be using the energy equation. And here it is. And I'm going to uh, be going over this a little bit. I uh, must admit that the uh, Derivation of this is uh, quite involved. It's the type of stuff you'd be doing when you're uh, preparing for your uh, PhD qualifier. It's not exactly difficult, but there's a lot of steps involved. So I'm not going to do that in detail. I am going to go through and discuss some of the terms. And on the left-hand side, we see that we have the material derivative. On the right-hand side, we have a conduction term. And this term denoted as phi, that is the viscous dissipation. So let's talk a little bit more about those terms. So expanding the material derivative, I have the local time derivative, and that's going to be zero because we're doing steady state. And then I have the uh, convective acceleration, again, keeping with two dimensions in the x and y direction. And things are fully developed in the x direction, so uh, the uh, derivative of temperature with respect to x is equal to zero. And again, there is no y component of velocity, so the entire left-hand side is equal to zero. And let's talk a little bit more about this viscous dissipation. So again, expanding it in two dimensions. And viscous dissipation uh, represents the conversion of essentially pressure into thermal energy or mechanical into uh, thermal energy. That thermal energy is either uh, going to go into the fluid and heat it up or uh, be lost to uh, atmosphere or ambient conditions or a combination of both. All right, so the first term on the left-hand side, that is going to be uh, due to viscous shear stresses. And the final term on the right-hand side is due to uh, normal uh, stresses. And those familiar with the uh, derivation of the Navier-Stokes equation, we see Stokes hypothesis here as well. Again, we're not gonna be going through this stuff, but let's go through and see what terms we can get rid of. So in the first term, uh, well, uh, the uh, X component of velocity is a function of Y, so that term does not go away. Uh, there is no uh, uh, component of velocity, so that term is going to go away. Again, the flow is uh, fully developed, so it's not changing in the X direction. No Y component of velocity, fully developed, and no Y component of velocity. And so we're left with simplifying the uh, Laplacian the, the uh, for the temperature distribution, we're left with the conductivity times the second derivative of temperature with respect to Y plus the dynamic viscosity times the derivative of the exponent of velocity with respect to Y 
squared. All right, so just as a reminder, this is our equation for the x component of velocity. I'm going to substitute that in, take the derivative and square it. And we're going to, we're going to integrate this twice and uh, solve for temperature distribution as respect to y. Before we do that, let's uh, reiterate that the wall temperature or the temperature of the liquid at the walls are both Tw. So at y is equal to 0, it's Tw. And at y is equal to h, it's Tw. And again, we are going to take advantage of uh, symmetry, and we expect that the uh, uh, the temperature derivative with respect to y is going to be equal to zero at the center line, or y is equal to h over two. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, simplify this a bit, and now let's integrate. And so we integrate one, and we introduce our first integration constant, and we are going to recall that uh, we are going to have symmetry and so that the uh, uh, the gradient of temperature with respect to y at the center line is going to be equal to zero so i can plug that in and i can solve for c1 is equal to minus h cubed over six okay so uh moving forward we plug that in and now we integrate again and get the second integration constant and Review our boundary conditions at both y is equal to 0 and y is equal to h. Now the temperature in the liquid at the walls is Tw. It's always a little disconcerting when you have two boundary conditions and one unknown, but uh, both of these boundary conditions will substitute an equation yield at uh, C2, the second integration constant, is equal to Tw. Okay, so I know I'm skipping a lot of algebraic steps. Uh, I'm trying to keep this as a uh, short video. Uh, so hopefully you're concentrating more on the approach than... Uh, and then being distracted by the lack of uh, detailed algebra. So plugging everything in, this is our uh, final answer for the temperature distribution of y. We'll talk a little bit more about this, but first, uh, let's go ahead and plot it. So in the blue is the x component of velocity, again, a parabola. And in the gold, that is our temperature distribution with respect to y. So it's quite flat uh, in the middle. And uh, again, the uh, temperatures at the uh, edges, at the walls, are Tw. And one thing that we could be interested in is, well, at the center line, how much greater is the temperature than at the walls? And we can solve for that. And we have that here. All right, so I hope that you found this uh, uh, video useful. If so, please like and subscribe. And more importantly, have a great day.